It was a snow day in D.C. They were forecasting half a foot of snow. So the government was closed. My company follows the government, and so I was working from home. I've been on Metafilter for five or six years now, and I check it a couple of times a day. Metafilter is a community blog, kind of like Reddit, but it tends to attract a different crowd. It's a really tight-knit community of sort of cool, smart, nerdy people. And a sub-site there called Ask Metafilter allows users to upload questions for the Metafilter community. On this day, a post really caught Abby's attention. I was just excited about the fact that there was a code at all. I really like puzzles and word games and things that you can sort of dig into and try and solve an answer from. Someone was searching for a cipher to a mysterious code. But this code wasn't written by spies or intercepted from a satellite. It was written by a dying grandmother decades before. And the family, halfway across the country, was searching for answers. Dorothy Holm was born in 1927. She was a devoted mother and grandmother. She lived in a suburb outside of Minneapolis. And in her final days, she crafted a puzzle that would stump her family for 20 years. She scribbled an organized but seemingly random run of letters and symbols on index cards. And after Dorothy passed, the family spent some time trying to figure out what had been written on the note cards. And Dorothy's granddaughter, Jana, had been fascinated with the grid of characters. She recently told ABC News that she had thought the cards were intriguing. Part of me thought they were some secret code she was leaving. They looked for initials from family members and friends and didn't come up with a whole lot. But was there any meaning at all? And if so, was it a simple farewell? Or perhaps little reminders? Like, your son is named Bob. Your daughter is named Elizabeth. Things like that. Or could it be a final penance or a secret that she had been holding deep inside? In any case, the family soon gave up on their attempt to decipher the message. I get the sense that the family took Dorothy's cards and just sort of put them away in a drawer or in a cupboard for a long time. Matt Green is a cryptographer at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. He writes and cracks code for a living. The time that these cards were written was in the 1990s. You know, there was no community like Reddit or uh, Metafilter. But then you get to, you know, 2013, and all of a sudden you have this resource where there are people out there who are just interested in solving problems. You take this information, you take a picture of it, you upload it, and you say, hey, you know, help us with this. And that is exactly what Dorothy's granddaughter, Jana, did. She posted the index card on Ask Metafilter, and as luck would have it, Abby happened on the post. I didn't go into it thinking, oh, I'll be able to solve this. I went in thinking, this is a really cool, weird piece of family history for somebody, and I'm excited to be able to take a look at it. Sometimes a bunch of letters really is just garbage. It doesn't mean anything. But what's neat about these cards is you can look at these right away and say, these are probably not the ramblings of somebody who's completely out of it. The letters are well written. These symbols seem to indicate that there are thoughts here. I figured that they were probably the first letters of words. But at the end of the day, it comes down to that flash of insight that takes you past whatever barrier was preventing everybody else from getting into the code. I thought sentences don't usually end with three A words. And so I extrapolated from there. If it ends with amen, 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 then you might want to be saying thank you. So working from there, it was pretty easy to get to the T-Y-A-G's meaning um, thank you, almighty God. But then T-Y-A-G-F-E is probably thank you, almighty God, for everything. And looking deeper into the document, she discovered more. So going on the idea that it was a prayer, I started thinking about what are the basic prayers that you know everyone knows who's a Christian or was raised Christian. And so I looked at it, and I was just like, oh, our Father who art in heaven, oh my God. You know? Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. A riddle that had gone unanswered for decades was solved by Abby within 20 minutes of being posted by Jana. And although much of what is written on the cards remains a mystery, 
The family now knows that they are real thoughts and possibly more prayers scribbled by grandmother in her final days. And it has given peace of mind to both the family and Abby. I think there's something very human and very connecting in discovering that Dorothy had written a prayer. It's made a lot of people happy, but the coolest part for me has really been the fun of being in the right place in the right time, and being able to help was incredible.